Right now I'm using uh, Manzanita Micro's old analog Mark II uh, lead acid BMS units. So, so that's all these little doohickeys right Yeah, if you look on top of each cell, basically when you have batteries connected together in series um, and you start charging them, their capacities can be a little bit different. And when they come to the end of charge, if somebody is more full than somebody else, and you keep charging, then that one will get overcharged. If you have flooded batteries, you can be your own BMS and you can just let them gas and then go around and check the water levels and, and refill them. But with sealed batteries like I used and with like the lithium batteries, which are sealed as well, you never want to let them vent because uh, you'll lose permanent capacity since you can't refill them. So a battery management system that has a means of dissipating energy then when you charge it up, like right now, it's basically finished charging, and, um, but it, they had been equalizing. Actually, I guess if I crank it up, I'll make it equalize some more. You can see like this guy here is the most full right now, so each time the light blinks, it's telling me that it's dissipating, shunting energy here, uh, and just dissipating it as heat. So then the charger can keep charging the rest of the batteries to make sure everybody gets full without overcharging anybody. And the BMS units communicate back to the charger. Um, and then also when I go out and drive, the Manzanita Micro Analog BMS even uh, has a red light and a yellow light so it'll show you if the cell is low right at that moment or if it was low at some point since the last time it was charged. So after I go out on a drive, especially if I was driving it really hard or something, I'll open the trunk and see a whole bunch of red lights. <laughs> or if I'm just driving it normally, I can find my weakest cells if I go on a really long trip or something. And then I come back and look and see, oh, here's a red light. This one must have gone the lowest on the trip. I'll have to watch it more carefully. National Electric Drag Racing Association is sanctioned by the NHRA and in the NHRA rule book there are a series of rules for electric vehicles if you want to race them and one of them is having an emergency disconnect and so this one um, <clears throat> connects through the the Zilla controller's hairball and then that is connected to my contactor which is an EV500 Bubba model, that's what they call it, and it's because it is about the most beastly contactor you can buy. So um, if you open that then it opens the contactor and I put it in the tail light because this is also my daily driver and I have an extra tail light so usually I take the tail light out and put the normal tail light in when I'm just driving around. Um, but then if I go out to the track, I can just pop this one in with the switch and connect it up to the wires. So yeah, it's, it's always easy. Um, oh, and you can check out my license plate. <laughs> I got the electric plate because I did this before all the leafs and stuff came out. <laughs> yeah, I, I teach at South Seattle Community College um, I teach battery classes and a six-day conversion class, and um, that's always been pretty successful. It's exciting to teach other people, you know, what I had to figure out. This was my first conversion, and so when my friends and I started working on this, none of us really knew anything about electric vehicles, and we just learned as we went and talked with other people at the local EAA chapter, and. Um, and you know went from there so now I I provide consulting services to others and teach um, and I'm also vice president of the Seattle Electric Vehicle Association which is the second largest chapter of the EAA in the world so that's pretty cool and a lot of the other vehicles here are either from that organization or from the Tacoma EV Association so we've got a lot going on up here in the Northwest and we have clean hydroelectric power and uh, that's really awesome for our charging is some of the cleanest anywhere because overall I think in Washington State we're about the grid is about 70 percent hydro so it's really clean another project you can check out on Facebook is the range trailer 
and I almost brought it here uh, today, but I just brought the car instead. And the range trailer is a big lithium ion battery trailer that you can tow behind electric vehicles. And uh, I have an electric S10 as well with the General Motors EV1 drivetrain. It was one of the 50 that wasn't crushed. And so we hooked that up to tow the range trailer. And in November of last year, we drove it down to um, about Santa Barbara, California from Seattle and back, not on one charge, but stopping just a few times. We went about 3,000 miles in six days. So check out our Facebook page uh, for the range trailer for more about that.